somehow or another. I am not really prepared in any way, shape, or form here, am I? Hope that's recorded in the right place. Hey. Mm, now the eyes have seized up. <laughs> So, hey, my name is Paul Murphy, and, um, and, um, <coughs> I probably will be all the way through this song. I'd like to say hello to, uh, Mike Smith, uh, wherever you're to in the world. Uh, thank you for your nice comments, uh, about my songs and things. And, uh, you kind of got me back into writing this today. Fraction uh, of it. In, uh, I can't remember, about the year 2000, I wrote a song called To Hell and Back. And it's, uh, uh, it's the uh, lead track of the To Hell and Back album. I've been trying to find the lyrics to it for a little while now, but they, they're gone. I will probably have them if I've got the master disc of the CD booklet anywhere. Uh, I'm not going to read that now. Anyway, um, and it's a shame I like to have done it. So, but I remember the music. These only have four chords, because of the other piece I only needed them. I'm going to have to talk a little bit more. Can you hear the aircraft? And, um,. <clears throat> So I've written four pages worth of lyrics, eight verses. I don't know how they would come, it might be four verses, it might be eight verses, it always had a weird structure to it. Come on, fly past. Put some glasses on, even though I wrote it as large as I could. <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's so hard to stand up, I'm going to go off camera and try and shelter my legs. Uh, unfortunately, due to the uh, disability, it is really hard to. Uh, I'm picking up some buzz here as well. Let's go for it. <laughs> so this is the. It's called the Hell and Back Again. Which I, I didn't know what to call it, you know, I was going to call it Return to the Inferno, or Inferno Revisited, and uh, stuff. I didn't want to call it To Hell and Back Part 2, or To Hell and Back Continued. And, um, so on. Really? Okay. Yes. Here's a little furniture here. So I thought To Hell and Back again, because it's... Hell and back again. I'll come more of the song. To hell and back again. There's always subtleties. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Shadows, demons of a love blind mind. I've lived a thousand nightmares and a thousand more in the wings. You danced before Antipas, and I knew what your reward would be. Put your ear to the cellar door and hark as polished blades sing. who you were inside no matter how high the victim pile did rose you never were identified ah oh. god damn it I'm so sorry I'm blind as a bat I cannot see nothing and you can probably see me doing this it's because my legs are collapsing underneath me I'm too weak now but 
Red leg braces. Oh. Mm. Damn disease. <sighs> what the hell? No eyes, no arms, no legs. Fuck. <sighs> oh, Freaking gone out of tune. A tableau of deceit and lies Promising when the sunrise came You would recant your past But when the light stroked my face You were somewhere and someone else Yes, you took me to hell and back Now you are one who is a stranger to themselves Oh, you prophesied a flood and drew your suitors in two by two. I threw my invite away and took my chances that the wounds would hold. One day you'll stand in the ruins you created. Once desire abated, I have been to hell and back, and I saw your future foretold. in hieroglyphics to disguise your true intent when I deciphered what you meant oh the blood chilled in my veins your smile was a road to nowhere with minds laid on every curve you whispered make it to the bridge and I'll give you what you deserve your kiss was like an autopsy how to resist it all that's the game. My thirds were a wall chain, but your sister slipped me the key. Beneath the sunset silhouette, I found the strength to survive. If you make it to hell and back, then come and talk to me.
I'm so sorry, my dear friends. I would love to have done that better. Um, but there is no better anymore. Uh, I won't bore you with the details of my disease. Function neurological, motor neuro disease. But I have no muscle left, so well, I'm off of little bits left. And so I keep getting thrown out, the arms seize up. The legs give way and you just lose, you know, track of what you're doing here. And you cannot imagine the weather we're having today here. I'm just talking to distract myself from the pain at the moment, so please switch off if you've got something else to do. So we've had storms, we've had hail, and then the clouds, are, and it's bright sunshine and the heat comes streaming through. So I've got like... Even though it's like, you know, spring here, you know, I've got the heater on in here because it was freezing when I started playing. And then it's just like baking in here now because the sun's coming. I'm going to try a second take. Uh, I can remember actually the recording session of this. I didn't play it live because I think it lasts 18 minutes long. Um, I'd need to dig the album out. I'd love to hear it actually. I can remember the opening lines of it. I've, the opening lines of this, I was fighting shadows, that's like a um, homage. Because the original opening lyrics of the song are I was chasing rainbows from the moment that we met Trying to forget every second I'd lived up until that time You told me who you were, but I tried to forget bottom of a mountain of love it's impossible to climb but the second two lines I just made up there on the spot there are the first two lines of the original opening lines and I remember the original recording which was actually only over a four track I never transferred it to eight track if you're happy with it you know you've got no need to if it sounds okay you know and um, Whenever I got stuck into a recording session, I always remember my first album and a guy called Mike Pence. There was a limited edition. The first album came out as 100 copies, the first CD. I'm talking 1997 now. There may be more, maybe next year album, which is just there in front of me, actually, or the rough mix of it. And, um, so, I, and uh, so I had 100. Yeah, I had all of them in hundreds, so I recorded it here, or upstairs. And um, then you send it away to get it, uh, send the master disc away to get it pressed up and a hundred cent back. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. I remember them, I remember them calling me after a couple of days. Those were the days when you had to pick your telephone up like that. And remember those days? Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. And um, and they said, well, well, we're having. We've had to put a lot of Dolby on it to take the hiss out. There's a lot of hiss on here. I said, no, no, the hiss is meant to be there. Because it was recorded, I had an open mic there. Because I kind of wanted it to be basement tapes kind of um, uh, thing. And uh, they were similar, but just the idea of it, because it was recorded in the spare room, you know, so I was going to put a spare room. I like that room ambiance because it was, you know, playing live. Uh, 15 years at that time, you know. Ask any musician when you go to do sound check and you're in the empty hall in the afternoon and you play, you know, and you, and you hear the air, you know, you hear the notes reverberating off the air. And I always just like that, you know, that feel of that. And um, where was I going with this? Hello, oh, Mr. Dove. I'm afraid all the biscuits gone. And the other thing is, every time that the rain stops, all the birds come back down again wanting food because there's all they're like using their wings as umbrellas, <laughs> or using <laughs> using the sparrow as an umbrella, like you know, so the pigeons are using sparrows as umbrellas. Put your wings out. Man, <laughs> that's a strange noise for a sparrow to make, isn't it? Um, yeah, and I said, you know, the hiss has got to come back anyway. It's where I was going with this. So, uh, and there was a lyric booklet inside the first hundred. And, uh, and that covered my cost, you know, for, for living costs for about two months. You know, the good old days, pre-streaming days when musicians make money out of music. Um, uh, you can't.
can't pay the rent on the floors, folks. You really can't. That's why I never became a gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I, I, I know there's a guy called Mike, Mike Pence. Mike Pence is the American vice president they were going to hang. Oh, well, then Mike Pence, who, um, who I believe is dead now. His wife is very nice. And he bought a copy. Saw him a couple of days later, and he said, uh, "Your album." And I said, "Yeah, you know, waiting for words of praise to spring forth. Oh, well sung and well played, and you know, uh, beautiful bass playing, and other glissandros drip off of, uh, <laughs> of every corner of the room." And he said, "I sit down." He said, "He said I've been sitting down every night." He said, "I didn't." And I've been reading the lyric booklet, amazing. I know, what the freaking hell do I need to make an album for them? I read the lyric booklet, I keep reading the lyric booklet. Okay. So ever since then, whenever I've done a recording session, I've got too involved in it or anything. You know, what it looked like is going to be too much work, you know. I said, yeah, I'm not going to read the lyrics, you know. Anyway. But I do remember the recording session for this sheets and sheets and sheets of the stuff and I would be able to find them again so I could play the song. They must be here somewhere but you know, you know I've written 1500 songs you know and it's about time they stopped really. I will go to heaven with a, a guitar in one hand and a pen in the other and um, what was I saying then? Um, oh yeah and I, I remember doing a recording session and then doing the overdubbing. I did the acoustic, I laid the acoustic down. What order did I do it in? Dun, dun, dun. So the drums would have gone on last. So, how I used to do it was a, a, it was a long song like that. Uh, it would be acoustic. I'm just trying to think if I laid either the piano or the bass down. Um, I've always put the drums on last because I have a voice for You know, You know that old thing? <laughs> uh, I was trying to do it arrhythmically then, but anyway, my son, by the way, my son, Dylan, who is 11 years old, is a phenomenal drummer, has been since he was three years old. He is like a human metronome, he's sensitizing. And, um, and I always put the electric on afterwards as, um, as an accentuation on it. There's an electric version actually of the Helen back where I really busted loose on the chords. I might try an electric version of this one. Okay, I feel the painkillers have kicked in. <laughs> it doesn't help with the muscle, I'm going to try take two. I need to change the batteries on the other camera now. <laughs>